Hey, this is Greg, and today I'm going to talk about a new pedal, the RM1 from Greenhouse Music Works. So what is the RM1? It's a treble booster pedal based off a Dallas Rangemaster circuit. If you're not familiar with the Rangemaster or treble boosters in general, basically it boosts treble. It makes things really bright and really loud. Really simple, straightforward, but also really flexible and useful. Greenhouse Music Works is made by Justin Green here in Atlanta, Georgia. I know him from his band Mountain Party, who I've mixed and mastered for in the past. They combine punk rock and southern rock and protest music. It's really great stuff. Check out Mountain Party. And his company, Greenhouse Music Works, is a fairly new endeavor for him. And uh, he's making awesome pedals. Right now, they're making this treble booster, a full range boost pedal, and a fuzz pedal. And I think there's more stuff incoming. It's very small runs. I'll put a link to his reverb shop below if you want to check out and maybe buy some of his stuff. Full disclosure, when I asked Justin about getting an RM1, he asked me if I'd be willing to make a demo for it, but he did not tell me what to say or what to play, and this is just my personal opinion on the pedal and my personal thoughts. So why might you want a treble booster? Can't you just turn up the treble on your amp? Well, it's not the same thing. Guitar tone is all about where gain is happening in the circuit. And with a treble booster, you're able to gain up a lot of treble before it hits the preamp of your amplifier. By driving that high frequency into the front of your amp, you're able to make an amp that might otherwise be clean or even sort of dark, bright and distorted, and coax a lot of new tones out of it. This is the secret to a lot of classic distorted sounds from Black Sabbath and Queen. You get this really high-end focused, almost cocked wah sound, and a lot of cool distortion characteristics you might not have thought your amp was capable of. You can also push it into the front of an already distorted amp to take that distortion to another level or a different tonal place or give you a boost for solos. Feature-wise, this thing is pretty straightforward. It's got one knob, turning it up is just more. More boost, more treble. An interesting thing that this does have is this mod he added with the switch on the side. And what this does is it changes the frequency of the boost. Up is a classic treble boost range master style circuit. And if you push it down, it brings the frequency focus more into the mid range, which can really warm up a sound and is really cool for smooth solo tones. These pedals are handmade, hand wired. They feature germanium transistors, which has a kind of classic tone. You'll hear about germanium pedals all the time, especially in vintage style distortions. Germanium has great tone, although it does have a few drawbacks that can make it hard to integrate into modern setups. This is more about a true to vintage circuit and that classic sound. I got my Les Paul and I'm plugged into this Marshall amp on a clean channel set kind of dark. And I've got it almost edge of breakup. So if I really dig in, it starts to crunch a little bit. In my opinion, with the treble boost pedal, it works best with dark guitars and dark amps, which is why I'm starting with these. 
That way there's a lot of room to add a bunch of treble before it starts getting like harsh and thin sounding. If you start with an already bright amp and use the treble booster, you might end up just with cut your head off, super bright treble. And I go for more balanced tones usually. So starting off with dark and then brightening it up with the pedal works really great. Here we go. So that distortion you're hearing is not really coming from the pedal. It's not a distortion pedal. We're just hitting the front of the amp so much harder with so much more high frequency content that it is distorting in this way. And this is the kind of sound I used for the rhythm guitars on that demo song. When I start playing higher, you can start to hear this kind of like cocked wah high mid frequency thing that is just a lot of focus on the frequency that this is boosting. If I switch to the other mode on this pedal, you'll hear that frequency get lower and it turns into a more warm mid-range kind of thing. On the low notes, it starts to fuzz out and it's super cool. Back to high frequency. And that's really all this pedal does. It's really simple, but very effective. And the way to get different tones out of it is to hit it into different things. So right now, I've got this clean setup. If I go to more of a crunch sound, that's without the pedal. And if I boost this, it will take it into high gain territory. And if I do the same thing with the mid boost, it makes a nice smooth lead sound. Now I switch to my Strat, and this has uh, lace sensor pickups. It can sound kind of thin on its own, maybe not the kind of thing you'd want to boost treble with, but with the mid-range setting on this, it can really thicken up this guitar. So here's what it sounds like just on its own into the amp. And here's with the mid-boost cranked on this pedal. Takes a thin single coil bridge sound and beefs it up into a thick rock tone. If I go to the neck pickup on this guitar and put this into treble mode, we could get some really cool spanky sounds. Now I've switched to a super strat with humbuckers. I've got a crunch tone on the amp. And treble boosting this gets us into 80s hair metal territory. And hitting it with the mid boost is a great lead tone. Now for the question I know everyone who looks to buy a Range Master pedal is thinking. Does it gent? Yes. So... I've got an eight string guitar. The low string on this is an F sharp below low E on a regular guitar. Plugged into my PV6505 on the lead channel. The sound is already pretty high gain. But if we want to take it into tight Meshuggah territory, we need to boost a lot of high end and cut a lot of low end to get a really tight metallic sound. That's where this thing comes in. I've got this cranked all the way on treble mode. This is just gonna goose the front of this already high gain amp with a bunch more high frequencies and a bunch more level. And it's gonna take it to tight, super metallic category. Listen to the change in the pick attack especially. So 
I'm going to wrap this up by giving you my final conclusions on this pedal. First of all, the build quality is super solid. It feels rugged and roadworthy. It's hard to make it sound bad. It sounds great and it's so easy to use. Just one knob and one switch. It does its thing. It's kind of a one trick pony, but it does that trick very well. It's also great to support local business and small builders and have a unique piece that you're not gonna find in Guitar Center. As far as downsides, the one trick pony thing might not be everyone's cup of tea. They're making two very similar but slightly different pedals with the RM1 and the PB1 with some kind of overlapping feature sets. But me personally, I like having something that does one thing really well that I know I could just plug it in and get that tone rather than having a ton of settings. Another thing is it is a bit noisy, especially when it's cranked up. That may or may not be a problem considering your situation. In the studio, it's not that big of a deal because I can mitigate that. But in a live setting, it could be an issue. All in all, I love this pedal. It's a fresh take on a classic circuit. I really enjoy the design, the color, the aesthetics feel great to me. Having this switch on the side to change the frequency at boost turns this simple pedal into a really versatile tool. I see myself using this all the time for crafting tones in the studio. I know that Justin at Greenhouse has a few other pedal ideas in the pipeline. I'm really excited to see what he comes up with next.